So what is the best way to teach your child how to read in 2019? I'm going to tell you right now. My name is Akiba and I am a certified teacher turned homeschool mom. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you're interested in the best way to teach your child to have a fun and happy relationship with education and you want to maximize your child's potential, start now by subscribing and clicking the little bell so that you don't miss a thing. So one of the most common questions I get from parents and teachers is how do I teach my child or a child how to read? So the reason I made this video is because there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube, especially early childhood learning videos that are either wrong, outdated, or ineffective in teaching children how to read. Now a lot of you are going to ask why, why, why throughout this entire video because if I answered every why question this would be a very, very long video. However, I will start off by just addressing some of the three major things that we're kind of doing wrong that needs to change. So one of the things is learning, teaching a child to read using their ABCs in ABC order. That's not the most effective way of teaching a child to read because research has shown from some of the top educational experts and consultants in this country and abroad, we want the child reading authentically as fast as possible, as early as possible. So if you're teaching an ABC order going, ah, boo, you're not being effective. The next big misconception is with sight words. You'll see a lot of people and a lot of videos just saying, here, sit your child in front of this and teach them sight words. Sight words is a very outdated way of teaching a child to read. Now, I learned how to read with that method. It's called the whole language approach. And I would say there's nothing wrong with it because I turned out well, but for a great majority of the kids learning to read that way was slow and effective. And we saw that later on down the line, they had trouble reading phonetically, reading words that they were not familiar with. So throw sight words out the door a little bit. We still use them, but we're going to use them in a different way. And the final big mistake is teaching a child how to read using the standard English alphabet. We use something called the Distar alphabet when we're teaching a child how to read. And I'll tell you why. So the standard alphabet looks like this. If you read this up here, it says Pam had ham. That's perfectly fine because every letter here and every word makes the sound the same sound. So this M says mm, this M says mm. This A says ah, this A says ah, this A says ah. That would be totally fine if that were the case in English and, and it's just not. For example, look here. He and she go to the lake. If you look at these underlined words or the underlined letters here, E makes a different sound here. Here it says E. Here it says E. Here it says uh. And here the E is silent. What's a child supposed to do? It makes it really hard to learn English because of that. And it's the same with the letters A here as well. So what we do is we switch it up and we use the Distar alphabet, which gives kids little hints on how you pronounce that sound. So for example, we put a little line on top of the letters that say their name. So for example, here the child knows that we say E as in he, you say O here, and here you say A, as opposed to this O where you don't say O, okay? You say two, as opposed to this A where it doesn't say its name, it says A. Ah. So that's why we teach using the Distar alphabet. That being said, what is the best way to teach your child how to read in 2019? Well, it's a mix of direct phonics instruction mixed in with sight words in a specific order in a way that's fun. And all of that, what I just said, is research-based. So let's jump in and get started with our materials. First of all, everything I use here is linked in the description box below. I find that I'm two ways. Either I want it for free or I want it right now and all together. So just to let you know, most everything that I'm using here, you can get from your local library for free or wait and get it secondhand if you have the patience. If you're like me on some days and I'm like, nope, just 
Give me everything I need. I'm going to start teaching my child how to read tomorrow. Amazon Prime it to me. I also put a list down there that has everything you need right there. You just add it to your car and you'll have all these materials ready to go to start teaching your child how to read tomorrow. Now, for the purposes of this video, I've kind of outlined the steps to learning how to read in like 10 steps. So the first step is you're going to get some sort of reading tracker. This makes it fun. Learning how to read is not always fun and it's tough and challenging for kids. So all this is is a little tracker that my kids take and put a sticker on the number of lessons that they've done. And when they reach a certain number of lessons, when they hit three lessons done, when they hit eight lessons done, when they hit 11, all the way up to when they finish the program or finish the lessons that I am teaching them, they get rewards can be free rewards like getting a high five party, getting your nails painted at home. It doesn't need to be anything paid. I do have a treasure box full of goodies that I found for free or at my local Goodwill stickers and things like that. Number two, you introduce this star alphabet. We've already talked about this, but you're going to introduce it in a specific way. Any good learning program will introduce these sounds in just about this order because we want children reading right away. Research has also shown that the earlier a child is able to engage in actual reading, the better it will be for them longer term. So, mm, s, a, e, we teach those sounds early on because think about it, if we didn't teach until we got way 20 letters down to the T in the alphabet, then my child would have to learn 19 sounds before they could sound out the word the. What you're gonna do with that though is you need to learn how to say these sounds yourself. And I'm saying that as someone, again, who did not learn how to read phonetically, and so it was really hard for me as a first and second year reading teacher to teach phonics to my students when I didn't know it myself. So I had to practice. You're gonna practice these sounds on your own. The best way to practice the sound is to think about a word that ends with that sound. For example, D. A lot of people, when they teach a child how to say D, teachers included, will say D, D, D as in dog, D, D. You're saying D, the sound is D. It's different, D. Had, D. I'm not saying had, uh, I'm saying had, okay? And so it can be a little bit tricky, but the reason we want to do that is because when you're teaching kids these sounds, we want to make it accurate. Otherwise, it's going to be more difficult for them to pick up on those sounds while they're reading. One of the reasons why I love this book is because it's got a pronunciation guide. In the beginning, they will teach you how to say the sounds so that you can teach your child. So I would highly recommend grabbing this from your local library or getting it on Amazon using my links below. So we are teaching these sounds in this particular order using Distar writing. Number three is you teach the child to write as you are teaching them the sounds. So day one, when you teach mm, you also have the child write out mm. I love this paper. It's very plain and very simple, especially for young writers. However, you can also use a whiteboard. All right, now, after the child learns a few sounds, we're going to teach them how to blend. And what I like to do is tell my children and the kids that I'm teaching to blend like Dory talks when she's talking like a whale. So when Dory talks like a whale, she talks like this. There's no sound in between the words she is saying. A lot of parents and teachers will mistakenly do this. Mmm, e, me. That's not right. The way you sound out a word is like this. Mmm, me. Not taking a breath in between these sounds. Mmm, mat, mat. If the child is going, mm, at, mat, tell them no. Say it like Dory, mm, mat, mat. Why? Because trust me, I've taught fifth graders who are still segmenting out each sound like this and they can't put the whole word together. So you're going to teach blending in an accurate way. Number five, once the child has some consonants and vowels under their belt, we're going to introduce decodable text. Decodable text use this particular order 
of sound so that children can read entire books or passages on their own. Now, you can find decodable text in a few places. One of them that teachers use is called Reading A through Z. It's not free, it's a subscription-based service. The other thing that is really, really popular are Bob books. Bob books are just the type of decodable text and the reason I love them is because they're small, they're little, and the child can say, wow, I read an entire book by myself and that boosts up confidence and that makes this process a whole lot more fun for kids. So I'd highly recommend picking up some Bob books and introducing them after the child knows some letter sounds. So number six, which kind of goes with number five, is you're introducing sentence reading. A child starts here, goes all the way to here, and learns how to read a sentence. They learn that there are spaces in between each word. And you start here, and you blend. The ram is sad. And they learn to stop at the end of a sentence when they see a period. Now, you're going to slowly and slowly have the child increase the speed in which they are reading these sentences because they're going to be reading it so slow at first that they don't even understand what they read. So you're going to show them, good, you read it slow, now I'm going to read it the fast way. The ram is sad. And you're going to slowly over a couple of weeks do that and that child will be reading sentences like this in no time. This is when it starts to get really exciting. Number eight, sight words. Now this is the time when we start to introduce sight words. Well, what are sight words? There are two types of sight words. One type of sight word is a high frequency word and those words occur so often in the English language that we want kids to kind of just see them and say them. The other type of sight word are words like was that cannot be sounded out no matter what you do. So that's the type of sight word that you're actually going to introduce first. And you just say, okay, sound this word out and then you say yep so that word actually says was and there's no way to sound out this word there are some words that we cannot sound out in the English language so we just have to know them this is one of them this word is was what word is this was there you go and so some of these other words just occur so frequently in the English language that we just want kids to know them now we don't want to start with this because I want my child to be able to decode this word. I want the child to be able to sound out this word, but I also want them to be able to say it fast. And when I say it fast, I mean within three seconds. Sometimes you'll see people going like this. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? You're going way too fast. Give them a few seconds. It is okay for a child to take about three seconds in kindergarten age to be able to decode a word or to actually be able to get a word from their memory bank. Now, with sight words, again, we're not just going to take these sight words and flip them in front of their face. That's the old school way. We're going to play games with these sight words. We're going to have the kids engage with these sight words in really super fun ways. One thing I like to do is hide sight words around my house and tell my child to find it. And when they bring it back to me, I say, okay, give me a sentence with this word. Okay, now let's paint the words. We're really going to dive deep here and we're getting away from a culture of just simply saying the word and moving on. I love these particular sight word cards because they, first of all, they feel really nice, but they also already have sentences on the back of them and that's just another way of diving deep with a child. However, obviously, you can make your own sight words with flashcards or print them out off of the internet. So these sight words are actually the first 20, 24-ish sight words here that occur in about 25% of any text a kindergartner is going to be reading. So start with these sight words. Number nine, now we're going to reinforce all the work that we're continuously doing with games and activity books. So I recently found this Bob Books Developing Readers Workbooks. I love it. I've looked through it and it's not perfect, but I love that it correlates with their other books and it gives children a chance to start to write words right away. This is a super good workbook, so I would highly recommend it. However, you can do any activity you want in order to get kids engaging with reading, including reading to them. And finally, number 10, we're going to start to point out some word families to a child. Word families are just combinations of letters that we see common in the English language. So 
We can sound this out. It says op. Once the child knows how to sound out some word families, then you teach them, oh, did you notice that whenever we see this, it says op? And when I just change a consonant in front of this, it says something different. Stop, cop, bop, okay? So you teach that those word families after the child can already sound out the words. All right, so that's it. Now you know everything you need to know in order to teach your child how to read. Do go and pick up a text like this that is from an authoritative source because even though it's not really complicated to teach a child how to read, it is difficult because there are a lot of small little things. For example, the names that the sounds actually make, also giving corrections to a child that these experts know that is kind of difficult to learn. The reason why I love this is because it's scripted. And everything you tell a child is right here in pink. All you have to do is read it and you're able to give clear, direct instruction that will really benefit the child in the long run. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. If it has been helpful, please just give me a thumbs up. If you have further questions, head on over to the community tab, put your questions there, and make sure you're also following me on Instagram. All right, go and teach something fun today.